Now this could be to create organic geometry. This could be to create tube or pipe routing, anything like that. However, if you've done splines in a 3D sketch before and you dragged your sketch around, you may have noticed a little bit of difficulty getting things to go exactly where you want them to go. So this is kind of my suggested workflow. So just to show you kind of the issue with uh, just plopping down your 3D sketch spline. So I'm gonna to go to sketch, 3D sketch. I'm gonna grab my spline. Yeah, you can connect things in 3D and kind of place things uh, the way that you want, but you just kind of don't have a full 3D perspective. It's still only 2D. So if I rotate this around, this might be absolutely not where I intended this to go. And maybe I can click and drag these spline points around, but if you mess with these a bit, you might see your spline kind of explode or distort in kind of a way that you don't intend for this to. So this is my suggestion here. So if you have worked inside of a 3D sketch, there's this button that you might not have noticed. It's actually always been there. And that's this little button over here to create what is called a 3D sketch plane. These planes are only available inside of a 3D sketch. All right, so if I click on this, just like you're setting up your typical reference geometry with a plane, just like that. So maybe I'll make it referencing this face over here. And then I will go ahead and, uh, let me make this a bit further out. That looks good. What this does is it creates a plane, again, only accessible inside of a 3D sketch. It highlights it in yellow and it puts this grid through it. So let's say I grab a spline tool. Even if it looks like I am throwing the spline way far out into space, because this plane is activated, if I rotate, you'll see that this sketch got made exactly on that plane. All right. So if I want to deactivate that plane, I double click on the outside and now I'm working wherever I want inside of my full 3D sketch. So that's a way for you to implement some control. Now, what I might do for a spline, for example, so I'll activate this plane. Let me stretch this out a little bit to make it a little bit nicer. So I'll grab the point tool and I'll put down the points that are gonna be the most important to whatever I'm setting up here, right? Then what I could do is fully resolve this and fully define this by smart dimensioning it. I might add a smart dimension here. That looks good. I might add a dimension between this point and this circle, uh, whatever I need to do to get this to be fully defined. All right, I'll just leave this as to whatever values it likes for now. That looks fine. So essentially you get this to a fully defined state. Then what you can do is I deactivate all the planes that I have, all my 3D sketch planes. I grab my spline tool and then I'm just playing connect the dots. So I'm gonna start this over here and start this at this point. And then I'm just connecting these dots here. I already have this predefined path. So it makes it much easier for me to set this all up. Now I get these nice spline handles in here that I can use to kind of control the way that this comes out. But because I have these points here that have been fully defined to define that path, it makes it a lot easier for me. If I'm dragging these spline handles around, it doesn't become a mess by accident. One thing I might do, for example, is if I click on this drop down next to my top level view filter, I can enable the temporary axes, so I might not have made them deliberately, but they got made because you know a cylinder has an axis through it no matter what. So something I can do is add in a relation between that line and the spline handle, right? I might make them collinear, for example, and now this is going to come out perfectly. So because these points have been set on that plane previously, I don't have to worry about applying a relation there and having something screw up somewhere else in my spline. So I really do get a ton of control over my 3D sketch, which is really cool. All right, and note that you can also apply relations to your spline handles and other entities inside of your sketch here. So if I hit okay, I can go into my features. I can do a swept boss slash base. I can use a circular profile, so I don't need a sketch one. That'll be 20 millimeters. I'll make sure that this is not gonna merge. And now you have a very controlled pipe. If you got some weird skewing like this, you know that you need to go back and make some adjustments. Like for example, if I go back into my 3D sketch, I can right click my spline here. Now, a lot of people might not have dealt with these before, but right clicking a spline actually gives you more options for 
the controls you can use, and the kind of feedback that you get. If you don't like the spline handles, you can actually convert this to a control polygon that shows kind of the maximum and minimum extremities of your spline. And it's another way for you to control your geometry. Some people do find this easier than using spline handles. If I want to get some feedback device for this, I can right click this and I can go into showing me my curvature cones. And now it becomes very clear, you know what? I got a lot of twisting here. I might need to make some adjustments to my spline handles so that I don't get that skewing in my tube. All right, so being able to access these feedback devices so I can tell if something needs to be adjusted or not is crucial, right? Otherwise, you're doing a lot of guessing and checking. So when you're working with a spline next, take a look at those control tools and some of these feedback tools. It's very helpful.